Hello, I'm Tony DeMaria, the editor of Jack. I'd like to tell you about some papers from a focus issue on biomarkers that we're about to publish in the near future. A key question in modern cardiology is predicting which patients are going to have a cardiovascular event. Traditional risk factors fail to predict the large percentage of cardiovascular events and have limited specificity. Imaging techniques are expensive and not well suited for mass population-wide screening. So there's a real clinical need for biomarkers that could complement traditional risk factors and in this focus issue, we're publishing a prospective study on circulating microRNAs and the risk of myocardial infarction. A European team used a long-running population study being done in Bruneck, Italy, to look at the association between baseline levels of microRNAs and the occurrence of myocardial infarction in the next decade. They found differential co-expression signatures of circulating microRNAs, with platelets being a major contributor to this pattern. These results suggest there's a measurable microRNA signature associated with the incidence of myocardial infarction in the general population and highlights the importance of platelets as a major contributor to the circulating microRNA pool. Future studies will be needed to address whether endothelial and platelet microRNAs can serve as novel biomarkers for clinical decision making. Out of hospital cardiac arrest is often deadly, and when it's not, managing these patients long term can be a major challenge. Survivors of cardiac arrest often require lengthy intensive care admission and rehabilitation. In fact, they often require ongoing treatment of chronic complications and often have poor functional outcomes. However, correct prediction of such outcomes has been elusive. Investigators in Israel conducted a unique study examining the effect of adding biomarkers to clinical data for prognostication after cardiac arrest. They focused on protein S100B, a calcium binding protein expressed mainly in human astroglial cells that are as sensitive as neurons to hypoxia, and neuron-specific enolase, so-called NSE, whose serum levels rise more slowly than S100B but are more specific for neuronal damage. They sampled these markers in 195 cardiac arrest patients at the time of routine blood testing, so no change was made in care. Now, only 22% of these patients survived to hospital discharge, and only 13% were uh, discharged with a good outcome. And what did the biomarkers reveal? Well, patients with a good outcome had significantly lower S100B levels at all time points and lower NSE levels early on compared to those with a poor outcome. Although few of us would agree to cease ongoing resuscitation efforts based on the results of blood tests alone, many of us would not hesitate to modify treatment in accordance with a better estimation of the likelihood of a good outcome. Patients who survive out-of-hospital cardiac arrest are very difficult to care for, and stratification based on a combination of biomarkers of brain damage and clinical characteristics may help us a great deal in managing these patients. Recently, an interesting question was posed. Can a widely accepted marker of renal dysfunction be prognostic in patients with acute MI? The marker in question, neutrophil gelatinase-associated lipocalin, thankfully abbreviated NGAL, detects renal tubular damage and acute uh, kidney injury. However, it's not been investigated in patients with acute MI until now. Now, why should investigators look at NGAL in the first place? This renal marker is also expressed in endothelial cells, smooth muscle cells, and in macrophages and atherosclerotic plaques. Plus, NGAL may be involved in the development of atherosclerosis via endothelial dysfunction. 
The mark are also significantly elevated in the presence of coronary disease and correlates with its severity. And in acute heart failure, it's a strong predictor of 30-day rehospitalization and all-cause mortality. So there's a significant rationale to believe NGAL might be useful in acute MI, and a Danish team of investigators decided to study the prognostic utility of NGAL in STEMI patients treated with primary PCI. They demonstrated for the first time that high NGAL is an independent predictor of all-cause mortality and cardiovascular events after PCI for STEMI. Even after adjusting for conventional risk factors, renal function, and other significant baseline values. So the question was, is NGAL merely reflecting serious kidney problems? Uh, the investigators adjusted their analysis for both uh, glomerular filtration rate uh, and further uh, increases in creatinine during admission and even severe hemodynamic stress. High NGAL remained an independent predictor of all-cause mortality in MACE, which suggests a non-renal contribution uh, to this prognostic value of plasma NGAL. So in the biomarker focus issue of Jack, we talk about some potential interesting biomarkers, microRNAs, uh, uh, biomarkers of brain damage, and uh, NGAL as potentially being of great value in patients with cardiac disease. Thanks for watching. For Inside Jack, I'm Tony DeMaria.